With your party pass for the money, you come back empty when that 48 minutes is up and you will win. Welcome, Warrior fans, to Reed Field, where the Washington Warriors, the number one ranked team in Class 2A, face Crooked Oak in 2A3 action. T.J. Scholes here with Trey Palico and Stuart McPherson on the sideline. Warriors coming off a 42-7 victory over CCS last week, and the Crooked Oak Roughnecks coming off a 34-42 loss in a competitive game against Comanche. We'll listen to what? Coach Beller has to stay with his coach's show, Mr. McPherson. Welcome, everyone. Brad Beller's coach's show here on Scordle, Washington Warriors TV. Uh, getting ready for the uh, Crooked Oak Roughnecks and the Warriors here at Reed Field. We're going to talk to Coach uh, Beller a, a little bit about last week's 42-7 to victory over the uh, Christian Community Christian. I, last, I nearly said Christian Heritage because we were talking <laughs> about Christian Heritage. Or Community Christian Royals, uh, 42-7 up in Norman. Brad, the Warriors, uh, your defense right now is playing at a very high level, even with guys that are out. Yeah, I've been proud of the depth that um, we played with. We've had to rotate a lot of players in due to injuries, uh, just due to you know just normal rotation that you try to stay fresh throughout the game. And we haven't seen any production really drop. And uh, the first five games of the, this year, being able to go 5-0 and through those, fir those first five games are big. I mean, because uh, all five teams that we just got through playing will probably be in the playoffs. Right. Uh, or at least have a chance. And, and I would say at least four of the five will be in for sure. So, um, you know, the way that we've adjusted and not given up the big plays the last couple of weeks is the, probably the biggest improvement. Uh, but our physicality and consistency – uh, has has been really really fun to watch. You're uh, you're creating turnovers, Brad. Uh, either fumbles or interceptions in every ball game. Yeah, and and I really think that you know there's many different reasons to that. I think that in most of the quarterbacks' uh, mind, there's a clock uh, because sure. we're coming, our pressure's getting to them. But now our coverage is to a point where we're not as in much man, a little bit more zone. Um, if we do bring a lot of pressure, we go man, and then you definitely have to get it out so they're not able to throw the ball as deep uh, as fast. So um, the, the secondary has definitely came a long ways. It, we knew early in the year, we had talked about earlier, the inexperience of the line. They, if you were going to get us, I think you were going to have to get us early. And teams did, not over, overly often. I mean, we gave up some chunks of yards, but it was four or five big plays a game through the air. Now it's not happening, and uh, I think that that's going to be something that we can build on and continue to improve on, and that allows us to be a little bit more aggressive up front, bringing different pressures, uh, knowing that our secondary can stay on top of it. You, you've you got uh, 
when healthy, you probably have two two of the best defensive ends in the class in, in Milner and in Spalding. Yes, uh, and and that's the one thing you know. First couple of games of the year, um, Milner was lighting the world on fire, and then he has a setback with his collarbone. And then it seemed like Nathan Spaulding, you know, decided I'm going to take the team, put it on my back uh, from a from a pass rushing standpoint. And um, you know, we were struggling in the secondary a little bit at the time, so we didn't blitz as much. And so he was he was a one man show. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, Kane Lampkin on the other side has played uh, better each week. He's a sophomore just trying to feel his way throughout the this, you know the game. And then our linebackers are getting involved uh, in the pass rush. So um, you know, with Nathan and the Hayden. Hopefully both going to be healthy over the next couple of weeks. Uh, Cooper Alexander gives us depth there. Nate Roberts will give us depth. So the more healthy we get, the more probably open it will be to allowing those guys to go in and get a little bit more playing time defensively. And, and that's four or five really good pass rushers right there that we uh, are going to have at our disposal. Jackson Hendricks uh, stepped in at quarterback uh, these last two weeks, and he was on fire Friday night. He was. Um, I mean, when you're talking 12 of 18, most of the time, whenever you say 12 of 18, you're going to go, ah, it's 12 of 18 for maybe 180 yards. Right. Uh, when you go 12 of 18 for 341 and five touchdowns, uh, I know that those yardage might be a little, uh, you know, but whatever. That, it's still around 341 yeah. and uh, does a great job with the RPO, uh, throws the ball well into space and was giving our guys a chance to run and, and uh, you know, run after the catch. And then Mason Singletary and Mason Thomas, two sophomore again, uh, jump out there, make some amazing plays uh, up the seam and down our boundary. And so the other night we have four receivers that are catching the ball plus Cole Scott that I know we're going to talk about. Yeah. Cole Scott and the offensive line deciding to pounding uh, the football. It was it was a very fun night, but Jackson Hendricks just settled in. It just, uh, you know, was a calming factor and he, he understands when to get the ball out and where to put it. Yeah, uh, Cole Scott, the guy didn't have a 100-yard night, but we saw the old Cole Scott, uh, yards after contact, hit, spin, punish people. He did. Um, well, I think it was his second run of the game. He hit a guy and just took – the guy was a free blocker. He, he came through uh, on a blitz, and he hits him, and the guy just stops, and he spins off of him and gets up the field, and his feet continue to churn, and he has not had that ability. It's not that he – is a different back. He's just finally starting to get healthier uh, and back to 100. percent And he he looked like a man on fire. And uh, it was very it was it was very pleasing yeah. uh, and comforting to know that a guy like that um, is coming back and he's at full charge and our offensive line's progressing nicely. I, I went by him on the sideline uh, and I said, "You're feeling good tonight, aren't you?" He said, "Oh yeah." Yeah. So it, it is. It's good to see him back. It is. And, and hopefully the offensive line, you could tell that they were energized after the game. I brought up Cole Scott and the whole team gave him a, a basically a, you know, a, an applause because they know what Cole Scott means to this team and this program over the last several years and how hard he works. And he's a he's a team favorite and he's a captain for a reason. So uh, very proud of him. Well, and I got to mention Bruce uh, because uh, he, he called me last week after the coaches show and said, hey, you dog me all the time. And I said, well, when you do something wrong, everybody gets to see it, Brucey. And I said, but this week uh, they put by, by Joe Bennett nose guard and Brucey handles him with no problem. He did. We made some adjustments, uh, you know, for him to be at the end. Well, then when they put him in at nose guard, um, we just start hauling from the sideline old rules, old rules. Uh, and, and it's just our regular rules that we have. And uh, the first time that we caught him uh, was on a on a gap scheme, just a down block, and he blitzed uh, or slanted to Brucey's side, and Brucey caught him in the rib cage and drove him. I think he, uh, by Joe, ripped his helmet off, and I, not I don't know if it was intentional, but he was above him, and he was just trying to get off the block, and uh, so it was nice to see Bruce, you know, settle in because. He, he's almost taking too much of a role. He's putting too much pressure on himself right. to try to do everyone's job. Um, you know, being the senior, and, and he, he finally relaxed, settled in to his role, and back to Brucey e. ways. Yeah, uh, did a great job. Uh, Brad Crooked Oak coming in tonight. Uh, uh, a, a team is sort of on the down, downward slide, but they, they have the capability of scoring a lot of points. They have. They have four or five really good athletes um, that uh, that – they are going to get the ball to uh, as frequently as they can. They just do it in a different way. It's not always through the passing game. Uh, they might bring them in motion and run a long toss to them, uh, off tackle stuff, play action passes, 
um, you know, boot, boot legs, trying to get them the ball in space. And they've been up in every game we've seen them on film. They've been, they've been ahead in every game. They uh, have had a hard time maybe finishing off, but Coach Smith has done an unbelievable job of changing the culture because if anybody is coming to the game tonight and expecting to see exactly what they saw last year, uh, I mean, when we were done with the game by 8.30, it's not going to right. eight fifteen. It's not going to be that way. They they are doing things right. They're playing hard. Um, they just haven't had the um, maybe the closing the ability to close a game off. Uh, but they've definitely put up a lot of points and and have been fundamentally sound. Well, it's it's going to be uh, uh, always uh, when you get come back home. It's always good to get to play in front of your home crowd tonight. Uh, it's a lot of things going on. Uh, the girls softball team. Uh, hopefully by the time we're you're watching this uh, the ladies are be set for the playing in the finals on uh, on Saturday so uh, got to wish them the best of luck yeah whenever they win on Thursday and Friday and they come to a game they're excited oh yeah you know so our guys will be there uh, our football team will be there um, and, and and rooting them on and they, and they do play, a great job they play early so play the you get to you get to go so and we'll get to go and stay some right. years we've had to go and, and then leave, leave. Yeah. but uh, I, I you know the softball team is amazing they're fun to watch, and uh, you know we'll be there rooting them on. Hopefully, when we're watching this, we're going to the state championship game uh, on Saturday at 1:30, and uh, that you know hopefully they're here tonight, uh, ready to go. And it's Little League Appreciation Night, so we get to see all those future Warriors run out, you know, in, of the tunnel with our our current players. So it'll be a fun night. All right, Brad. Best of luck to you and the Warriors tonight. Uh, home game with Crooked Oak next week. Uh, travel down to Lindsay. Yes, sir. Big game. Big game. We'll talk to Coach at halftime and uh, get ready for Kyle and TJ. Uh, come back with more of the pregame right here from Reed Field. For the coach, Brad Beller, I'm Stuart McPherson. Stay tuned for more here on Scordle. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Hi, I'm Jake Coles, number 28 for the Washington Warriors. My mom, Sonia, with the Santa Fe Agency, is a graduate of Washington High School and a longtime Washington Warriors and Lady Warriors supporter. As an independent agency, Santa Fe has the ability to write policies with a variety of insurance companies, so finding the right fit for you, the customer, is easier. Please reach out to Sonia for your next insurance quote, whether it be on your house, auto, boat, RV, or commercial needs. Oklahoma Career Tech's been serving up skills for doers just like you for over 100 years. But this ain't your great Grammys and Pop Pop Tech School. Welcome all your fans to Reed Field. T.J. Scholes here with Trey Palico and Stuart McPherson on the sideline where the Warriors will host the Crooked Oak Roughnecks here in 2A3 action. Got Trey Palico in the booth with me tonight. Kyle's on vacation, lucky guy. Uh, and Trey, Warriors coming off a nice victory last week against the Royals from CCS. Kind of a different story from what happened a year ago against that team. Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, last year uh, we come and we, we played a little, little flat, a little close game there, and you know, last week was, uh, I think they were a little energized and juiced up for that one just from what had happened last year and was ready, prepared to get going against uh, CCS. Yeah, the only thing that I guess would be a stain on that victory was the number of penalties last week. And like we were talking before, who knows how many of those were actual penalties. A lot of holding calls, but, you know, you, you know that as well as I do, you can almost call holding on every single play. And the Warriors with uh, 12 penalties for 143 yards. I'm sure Coach Beller want that cleaned up this week. Oh, yeah. I mean, each and every week that you come out, you know, the one thing that you want to do is make sure that you're playing clean football, you know, and uh, last week was no different, but, you know, they did get flagged 12 times for 143 yards, and uh, that's something that's definitely got to clean up this week for sure. Now, one guy that had a heck of a game was Jackson Hendricks. Lots of passing yards. Even I think he might have had a uh, the most yards we've had at least since 2011 since our guy Mike Spalding's been keeping stats for us. Uh, talk about Jackson Hendricks' play last week, Trey. I mean, Jackson Hendricks was just uh, unbelievable last week. Was 12 of 18, 339 yards and five touchdowns. And the five touchdowns were to four different receivers. So it wasn't like he was just hooking up with one right. person. We had a matchup. He was reading the field, doing his job, finding open receivers and and letting them make plays with their feet. And his favorite target last week was the sophomore. Well, the Warriors had a big game. Sophomore Nate Roberts, big tight end, 
uh, caught himself four, t four passes. Um, lots of yardage on those passes, too. Lots of yards after catch for the young man. Yeah, you know, that's the one thing that I noticed and was, you know, looking at from last week with Jackson was that you could tell that he was definitely hitting open receivers because their yards after catch, I mean, Nate Roberts is 131 with 99 yards after the catch. So that means he's hitting people that are wide open in, in areas that he needs to. Singletary, 128 with 57 yards after catch. Mason Thomas, 55 with 47 yards after catch. I mean, the list goes on. So. He did a great job surveying his reads and hitting the people that were open to get those things. And then the defense uh, did another great job of shutting down um, the CCS Royals, only allowing seven points, and that's only the second touchdown they've given up in basically two and a half games because against uh, Frederick, it was a touchdown return for a touchdown, or excuse me, a kickoff return for a touchdown, and they uh, and then only gave up, didn't give any touchdowns up in the uh, second half. Let's sit down to Stuart McPherson, our sideline guy. And uh, Stuart, little little different change of weather we've seen in the last couple of days. Yeah, finally. <clears throat> There's stuff that's coming falling out of the sky. I really don't know. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen much of that lately. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, I think uh, we're probably going to have this off and on. Tonight it's not going to it's not going to be anything heavy. I don't think there's any thunderstorms that we've got to worry about any kind of uh, severe weather or, or a a game that gets postponed or anything like that. We sure don't want that tonight, guys. This is a game that Washington needs to just come in and take care of business real quick. Um, you know, last year it was a, a game that pretty much had a running clock uh, throughout the entire game, and uh, sure don't want to have that uh, happen. Uh, tonight, uh, but uh, with the injuries that the Warriors have had, uh, it probably wouldn't hurt. Well, Stuart, you were talking with Coach Beller earlier about the improvements of this Crooked Oak team. Now, they're not, they got a new coach, and they're not the same type of Crooked Oak team that has kind of been undisciplined and, uh, you know, not very organized. Right? Yeah. yeah, they've uh, they won a game. They beat Wayne this year. Wayne's not a bad ball club. They, they scored 35 points last week against uh, Comanche. Is a game that you know, we sort of kept up with during uh, play last week uh, at CCS and uh, was uh, interested in that ballgame. They scored a bunch of points. So they, they've got some athletes. Brad said that they have some athletes, and uh, they're going to try to get the ball in their athletes' hands quick and try to make you miss. And if you do miss, if you don't fit right, oh, you, uh, <laughs> they can, they've got the athletes that can take it to the house. All right, we're going to take a short break while the band gets ready to come on the field and play the national anthem. You're watching Warrior Football on WashingtonWarriors.tv. What you love. Whatever you choose to do, do you. Oklahoma Career Tech. Air Product Supply would like to wish Jackson Hendricks and the Washington Warriors the best of luck this football season. Air Product Supply is your local Client Master and Lux Air Distributor, supplying quality HVAC equipment and parts to Oklahoma and Texas. Give us a call at 405-288-0233 and we will get you in contact with a local, licensed, and trusted contractor near you. This is Tyler Beller, the voice of Air Product Supply, signing off. Go Warriors! Welcome back to Refield Band, competing in the state band competitions tomorrow will perform our national anthem. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, and especially for this moisture that's been sent our way. Pray that you'd send some more. Lord, tonight we pray for safety for these boys, and uh, that you would just uh, let us all have a good time out here tonight. Keep us, keep us safe as we go home. In Jesus' name, amen.
Again, a reminder, the Washington Warrior Band will be competing at PC North in the band state competitions. When we come back, we'll have the coin toss in the opening kickoff. You're watching Warrior Football on WashingtonWarriors.tv. B&H Construction is a proud Warrior partner. They are the leading directional drilling contractor with major operational hubs all over Oklahoma and in Texas. Their involvement in and support of our community goes far beyond utility construction. They're also a good neighbor and friend. When experience and safety count, your best source for directional drilling is B&H Construction. Go Warriors! high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. Hey, Warrior fans, this is Brian Arthur. My wife, Jennifer, and I are proud sponsors of the Washington Warriors and would like to wish all the Warriors and their coaches the best of luck this season. When you need a locally owned company that you can trust, look no further. For over 20 years, we have offered all of our customers the best products and services in the industry. Whether it's residential or commercial, we got you covered. Give us a call or visit our website. Entertain your children and grandchildren with videos that teach character and good values like obedience, kindness, gratitude, love of country, and self-worth. You know, just plain old common sense. Go to musicmunchkins.com to stream or order DVDs. And you'll be proud to see some of our own younger Washington Warriors in action. That's musicmunchkins.com. Go Warriors! Back to Reed Field, five and a half minutes till kickoff. DJ Scholes here with Trey Palico and Stuart McPherson as the captains for the Washington Warriors walk on the field. Looks like we have number 20, Hayden Milner, number 60, Wyatt McCauley, number seven, Cole Scott, and number five, Jackson Hendricks for the Roughnecks of Crooked Oak, number four, senior Davion Hill four-year starter at quarterback. And number five, Kedrick Vick. Referees for the night, or officials for the night, referee Peter Abernathy, umpire Tracy Matley, linesman Gary Guthrie, line judge Chris Park, back judge Jeff Miller. Their phone numbers, in case they make bad calls, are... I'm just kidding, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's a clean game. Of course, we talked about the Warriors' penalty issues last week be a clean game hopefully and make it nice and short sweet and injury free as the captains approach midfield got some fans running in had a nice day at the ballpark in hall of fame stadium tonight today hey trey oh yeah man what what a game today uh beautiful weather good softball and uh, watching the uh, Warriors come around. You guys are visiting today, so you guys call the point, okay? Go stand a silver dollar, okay? Hit the tail. What do we call? What did he say? Tails. Gentlemen, call was tails. If he drops it, I'll do it again. That is a tail. You've won the toss. You defer, receive, or kick. Defer. Looks like Crooked Oak won the toss. Defers. Yep. So the Warriors again for the third straight the third straight week will 
get the ball to start off with. Remember last week, Trey, onside kick by CCS to start the game. Yeah, I mean, definitely was shown on film, something that we probably should have been ready for. Uh, so, again, just like tonight, I think number one key is do not underestimate your opponent and what they're willing to do to win the ball game. Right, and whenever a team comes to play the Warriors, the Warriors have a big target on their back, especially not only since they're number one in the state this season, but every year uh, it's marked on a calendar whenever the Warriors – Assignment comes up on that Friday night for the opposing team. We'll take a short break. When we'll come back, we'll have kickoff. You're watching Warrior Football on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Hey, Warrior fans. There's a credit union designed for our community by our community members, Growing Oaks Federal Credit Union. We offer a wide array of banking services, a drive-up ATM, and money tools that will move you forward. Come and be a part of our member-owned, not-for-profit financial institution that knows you by name and has your best interest in mind. We're located behind Goldsby Store. We're here for you. Federally insured by NCUA. Go Warriors! Warrior fans, is your air conditioner making a sound like it's ready to take off? Is your heater not producing enough heat to take the chill out of the air? Then call Airfare Heat and Air. Dwayne Branham, Noah Zamora, owners of Airfare, are proud supporters of the Washington Warriors and are hometown guys with a hometown company that will give you great pricing on Luxair and Climate Master Geothermal HVAC systems. Need service on your existing equipment? Call them today at 405 -6. Welcome back to Reed Field as the Little League leads out the Washington Warriors. Let's go. Got a guy on a scooter out there. Come on. Moving pretty good. We talked a lot about the offense uh, from the CCS game, Trey, but the defense, you being a former defensive coach, they've been doing a pretty good job, and one man in particular, Mr. Nathan Spaulding, playing defensive end for the Warriors. Uh, yeah, man, Nathan Spaulding right now is, man, I hate to use this term, but unblockable, right. unbelievable. That guy is, is definitely the energy and things that have got going. You got Hayden Milner out. Uh, looks like he's dressed up tonight, may get a couple of snaps, try to get him back in, see how he's feeling. But, you know, what uh, Spaulding is doing with the rest of the defense inside is, man, is just is really nice to see right now. Hey, guys, think about you get, you get Milner back, and you've got Milner and Spaulding on the, on the ends. And then if you want to, just rotate in Cooper Alexander right. and, and, Nate <laughs> Roberts. <laughs> and Nate Roberts. Yeah, it's Probably got four of the best, four of the best defensive ends, definitely in the class, maybe in the state. Well, how fresh is Milner going to be too? And you know, chomping at the bit with his senior year, you know, not having, not having as many games as he would have liked. He's going to be like a. He came in that Jones game with one arm basically, and um, was able to get some tackle for losses. And well, that's what thing that, that Coach Miller had said that he said. Nathan really would like to get Milner back because right now all eyes are on him. Yeah. Right. Well, tonight's going to be a test in my uh, Spanish-speaking ability. So I know Coach Orr, our Spanish teacher, is listening at home, so maybe he can correct me on Monday. But kicking for the Crooked Oak Roughnecks is number 11, Victor Ontiveros. Back to receive is number 6, Cage Morris. And it lets it bounce, and it rolls all the way down to the one-yard line. Excuse me, that's Ben Vaughn. And he's looking for room to run up the middle. He's got the right side open, trying to outrun a defender as he gets to the 40. And he is finally pushed out of bounds by number 30, Miguel Villegas. But a nice return. Ben Bond's doing a great play. Oh, uh, yeah, back at the 25. He's had a great year at that kickoff return specialist. But this is going to be a block in the back. Yep. He pushed to about the 15-yard line. Go, Starting for the Warriors tonight, again, we mentioned him earlier, will be quarterback number five, Jackson Hendricks. Again, 339 yards passing last week and five touchdowns, excuse me, 332, 12 of 18, very efficient too. And like Trey mentioned earlier, did a good job of finding open receivers, as noted by the yards after catch by those guys. Two receivers come out on each side of the field. 
like a white hat. Helping Brucey fix his jersey. <laughs> and we'll start. First down and 10 at the 15-yard line of Washington. Jackson looking to throw early. He's got a man open. It's Mason Thomas at the 30. Nice block by Cage Morris. As he's at the 10, 30, 20, now he's going. He is gone. Touchdown, Warriors. 75, 85. Let's check that math again. 85-yard touchdown pass and catch. And Jackson Hendricks starts where he left off last week. Warriors take a 6-0 lead. Got to like the way the guys walk downfield. The receivers, they, they, once the catch is made, they're out blocking, clearing the way for him. On for the extra point attempt is Mason Thomas. Let's see if he has any gas left in the tank to kick this extra point. We've seen that earlier this year. Holding tonight is a new holder, number 12 for the Warriors. I believe that is Tatum Wilk. Gets the snap down. And it is incomplete. No, he didn't have any gas. No gas in the tank. <laughs> no good. And Warriors strike quickly. Leads six to nothing on that 85 yard touchdown pass and catch from Mason, from uh, Jax Hendricks to Mason Thomas. We'll keep it here since it's been pretty quick. That's where you start, Trey. Oh, man. Great start. Great read. You know, the, the safety bites on the under route, hits the flag over the top. Man, right there, good stuff, finding those open receivers with yards after catch That's again. Right. Stuart, you mentioned the good blocking. That was Cage Morris in his wide receiver position on that left side, able to spring that loose. And Mason Thomas's speed takes over after that. Speed kills, guys. You know, once you get in the open and, and you can just take off and burn, uh, it, it doesn't take – you don't have to have a lot of blocks. You can just – Get screen a little bit, basketball coach. You yeah, know, get a screen yeah. in there. Get in the way. Yeah, get in the way. <laughs> well, Mason Thomas now will kick off from his 40. See if he's got his breath back. He'll be kicking off to number five, Kedrick Vick. Mason Thomas had a touchdown last week. Three catches and 55 yards. So back to back week for the back to back to weeks for the touchdown for the sophomore receiver. The ball bounces. Number six, Ariel Mendez. Pushed out of bounds by Tatum Wilk. And that's where the roughnecks will start there. The first possession of the ball game. They'll start at the 23. Marlon Moore. Guys, one one guy we didn't Olsen mention there. is Warriors lost last week is Keller Howard, too. Keller Howard, okay. I didn't hear about that. But, uh, He's got a bad shoulder. Bad shoulder. He, uh, movement on the line. He, the, he thought he dislocated it. I talked to Coach Beller and he, he thinks it was more of a, a stinger, and uh, but again, a little precautionary week. Uh, let's let's let some of these young guys come in and play and uh, rest some guys. Yeah, Jake Cole starting for him, number 28. Sure tackling linebacker as the offsides is on the right side of the line. Looking to pass here is pressure brought by Spalding, and the pass is completed. Let's see how close junior Nathan Spalding got here with the Purcell Vision Source instant replay. Yeah, you lose Case Taylor. He's out for the year with a broken bone in his leg, and uh, he's going to be missed. You know, Coach Beller was talking about it. He was there. He got, he got everybody in position. Uh, and that's going to be missed. Knee was down when the receiver caught the pass, so it'll be second down and long for the Roughnecks. And Spalding there again. Not 
fooled by that misdirection, Trey. Yeah, you know, the one thing that uh, Crooked Oak's going to do tonight, they're going to be running the wing tee and the, and the, uh, the option a lot right here. So just trying to make sure that we read our keys and don't get caught up in the misdirection there. Be third down and long now. Not a bad strategy for Crooked Oak. I mean, if you're going to play a team that is overpowered offensively, you might try to grind that clock out as much as you can and try to keep it as close as you can. But obviously giving up six points on the first play, not what you want to see if you're a Crooked Oak fan. They got a jet sweep going. There's movement. Two men. Be another false start. Now it's third and very long. We'll see what they got in the playbook for this. Wing T, similar to the Air Force offense, is that correct, Trey? Uh, yes. I mean, you know, they they got they do a little combination of the wing T and the flex bone uh, put together, uh, buck sweep reverses and uh, midline and veer option. Here comes the jet sweep again. They hand it off up the middle. Maybe. I don't know. I'm lost on that. There's your misdirection as number four actually has it. Davion Hill, the quarterback, kept it with all that fake handoffs. And they're able to pick up a couple yards on that play, but not enough for a first down. It'll be fourth and about 15. And number 11, Victor Anteveros, be back to punt. Back to receive. Looks like Number, I can't see that number, but I think it's Ben Vaughn. Nope, number 12. 12, okay, that'll be Tatum Wilk, his first action at that punt return specialist. The ball gets punted out of bounds at the 42-ish yard line, and that's where the Warriors will start their second possession. Guys, you got to worry, and Trey, you can speak to this, that w when you do play a team, because it is dead out here. I'm just going to tell you, it's dead. Sideline is dead. Not a lot of talk going on, and you don't want to play down to your opponents tonight. You don't want to get developed some bad habits here. Absolutely. I mean, that's the one thing that, you know, uh, I had uh, the key to victory was don't that? underestimate your opponent. You know, that's the first thing you want to do. And then next you want to go and play clean football and good? try to do your assignments no matter what's going on right there. Warriors one play and one touchdown on their first possession as they send Mason Thomas in motion. Hendricks. Calling out the cadence, and now he's running a little option with Hudson Howard, waiting patiently to pitch, and now he's got Howard, nice cut back on that play, looking for more room to run, another cut as That's he gets close count. to the end zone, and he fumbles it, and Mason Singletary sprints down. I don't know if they're going to be able to. We'll see. Crooked Oak got it. Crooked Oak got it. Look at that again. There is a flag, so I'm sure... Crooked Oak will decline that as Mason Singletary was unable to recover that. And Crooked Oak. Trey, you're talking about playing clean football. Can't turn the ball over right there going into the end zone. Yeah, I'd pick up your second penalty of the game and then you fumble the ball going into the end zone. Uh, it's not a great way to start. Uh, clean night right there. And go back to the last statement about playing down to your opponents here. Right. So Crooked Oak on the touchback will start at the 20-yard line with 8.45 to go in the first quarter. It was pretty good patience there by Hendricks waiting to make that pitch, Trey. He kind yeah. of strung that play out. Yeah, well. absolutely. Running speed option right there, strung it out, and kicked it at the last second. And great play. Miller's in the game. Option ran to the right side of the field. Pitched to number seven, Colin Bruner. Gain of a couple. Break it second down and about seven. Yeah, one way to take uh, Milner and Spalding out of the game is to run midline veer option right at them. That way they've got to tackle the fullback and then pull pitch. So outside linebackers are going to have to have a great night tonight. 
talk about those outside linebackers. Ben Vaughn leading the team in tackles. See if he can get his fifth. Nice cut up the middle to about the 25-yard line by number five, Kedrick Vick. Bring up third down and five for the Roughnecks. Warriors sitting at 5-0 and on the season. Looking to get a big stop here on third down. Crooked Oak with some motion before the play. Oh, sweet. Nice tackle there by the Royals at the line of scrimmage. There is a penalty on the play. Let's see if we can see that on our Purcell Vision Source instant replay. The fullback comes in there and looks for somebody. Might be some holding there. Number 23, look like. Yeah, a little holding. We're going to decline that one. I'll bring up fourth down in a punting situation for the Roughnecks. 7.05 to go in the quarter. Tatum Wilk again back to receive this punt, standing at his own 39 yard line. 11, Victor Ontiveros. Back to punt. Last time, punt went straight right. This time, a high punt. Takes a bounce and goes sideways at the 49-yard line. And will be downed. And the Warriors start their third possession. Almost two plays and two touchdowns, Trey. But that turnover is costly for the Warriors. Very costly for the Warriors right there. Uh, one again. Clean is the word of the night right there. Clean, just keeping it clean, having the offensive line dominate the line of scrimmage, and then your skill guys getting to do what they love to do best is make yards. Stuart, you mentioned it um, earlier. It feels kind of dead. <laughs> Not a lot of energy um, on the on the field or in the stands right now. Yeah, it's it's haven't seen it like this in a while. Cantrell with the pass sideways intended to Cole Scott. Did not hear a whistle. And now they blow it dead. Cantrell, his first action in a couple of weeks. They throw a little pass to the flats to number seven. Cole Scott, incomplete, bring up second down and ten. Jackson Hendricks playing some receiver as well. Time they throw it to the right flat. Cole Scott makes a man miss. Or excuse me, that's Mason Thomas again. Having a good early night so far. As he's wrapped up near the first down marker. Take another look at that. Makes a man miss, Trey. Yeah, he's got good action on the counter right there. He swings it out. Uh, trying to make that field up cut with uh, number six right there. Trying to get the block outside. Third down and short. The Warriors have... Two tight ends line up short, and now Cole Scott gets his first handoff of the night. They will pick up a Warrior first down inside the 40, down to about the 37-yard line. Yeah, guys, it was, a, as they say in baseball sometimes, a late-arriving crowd. <laughs> and uh, they I, I, maybe they were all at the softball <laughs> game today. <and laughs> at 11, right? Just a little tired, or I, I don't know. It's it's amazing. It's It's just I could, if I yelled real loud, you could hear me. First down and 10 at the 37. Cantrell takes the snap. Hands it off to Cole Scott. He's got room to run. He's near the 20. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Warriors. 37-yard touchdown run by senior Cole Scott. Yeah, again, talk about guys blocking downfield. Jackson Hendricks throws for 340 last week, and now he's out playing wide receiver and making blocks down the field. So one thing that Coach Beller's always said, you want the ball, then do your part too. And, man, what, what a reception there by Jackson helping him into the end zone. Mason Thomas on for the extra point attempt. Time is up, and it's good. 
with 5.29 to play in the first quarter. The Washington Warriors lead the Crooked Oak Roughnecks, 13 to nothing. Watching Warrior Football on WashingtonWarriors.tv. 26 1989 to schedule a service visit. That's airfare, heat and air. Support your school's booster club and get your business. Welcome back to Reed Field. T.A. Schultz here with Trey Palico and Stuart McPherson. Warriors on a 37-yard touchdown run by Cole Scott. Take a 13-0 lead over the Crooked Oak Roughnecks. Mason Thomas set to kick off. Back to receive for the Roughnecks. Like number... Five. Come get it. Kedrick. But this is a short kick that gets recovered by number seven, Colin Bruner. And he is tackled at the 35-yard line by Jeffrey Osborne and a plethora of Washington Warriors. TJ, we'll try to find uh, Coach Lampkin. And visit with him after yeah. their semifinal win, going to the state finals tomorrow at 1:30 at the Hall of Fame. So yeah, I want to see a big crowd out there yeah. tomorrow. Good crowd today. Congratulate the Lady Warriors for making it to the finals for the second year in a row. 9-0 victory over the Lindsay Leopardettes as Crooked Oak quarterback. Davion Hill goes under center. Again, more movement. Seems to be a lot of that, Trey. Is that just the, what do you think that cause of that is for Crooked Oak? Just trying to hit, hit a guy quick or a lot of motion? What's the, what's the issue with that? Yeah, you know, I mean, I honestly don't know. I mean, to me, that's just, that's just disciplined football right there. I mean, there's nothing that the defense is doing. The defense is not moving around up front. So, for them to continue to be jumping off sides, it's got to be some with their cadence or uh, something like that. I can't see otherwise why they'd be jumping off sides or moving. I might move a little bit if I had Nathan Spalding and <laughs> <laughs> company behind the scenes there. Nice, again, misdirection, but the Warriors are not fooled. Wyatt Denton in the middle, and I saw a number 56, Canyon Alcorta in the play there as well. They tried to run it up the middle against the interior of the Washington defense. Easton Berglund, first one there. He, he came in take, taking uh, Case Taylor's place. What number is he wearing tonight? 52. Okay. 52. <laughs> yeah. Not 21. Back, back to 52 okay. tonight. Looks like he got 44, Jordan Kilmer in there, that outside back. Yeah, yeah. A lot of those kids... They had to cancel a junior high game this week. So they, with the anticipation to be able to play, as Nathan Spaulding and Caden Hutchinson are there for the tackle. Bring up third and long. But good to see Brayden Arthur out there, fellas. Missed a couple weeks in his senior season. He tries to knock off some rust at cornerback position. I bet you we're going to see a lot of guys tonight. Four minutes to go in the first quarter. Got Mason Singletary out there playing some safety tonight as well. Hill running the option, pitches it late. And nice run there by the back from Crooked Oak as he is pushed out of bounds near the first down marker. I think our cameraman, Jesse Carey, up there, he's going to have a rough night tonight trying to follow the <laughs> ball as well, huh, Trey? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, tight splits and then 
they're running all that misdirection. It's going to be hard to see, especially from up top. They are short of the first down, fourth and two. Now, unlike the Denver Broncos, they're going to punt. Another nice punt by Crooked Oak as the Warriors were in a safe position. Takes a Crooked Oak bounce inside the 20 and dies at the 15, 16 yard line. Uh, Trey, I heard, saw you laughing there. That, that game last night. <laughs> Oh, they were, look like Denver is trying to lose that game. Yeah, I mean, or, yeah, I'm not for sure what is going on with them right now. I only watch it because of fantasy football implications. <laughs> but I, oh, I didn't watch it and heard about it from multiple people. <laughs> It'll be first down and 10 at the 17-yard line for Washington. We'll see who comes out at quarterback on this series. Looks like Jackson Hendricks have Cage Morris and Nate Roberts, Mason Thomas as your receivers. Cole Scott behind Hendricks. Hendricks takes a snap, takes the handoff, rolls out to the right and throws it to Nate Roberts. Leading receiver for the Warriors, able to get past the 30 yard line and pick up a Warrior first down. That's a pretty tough play to defend right there, huh, Trey? Yeah, right there they got Nate Roberts coming back behind the line of scrimmage, underneath, running a boot, so Backer thinks he's got a clean shot on the quarterback, and then he forgets about the guy running underneath him, and Nate Roberts catches it for 12, 15 yards right there. Looks like the Crooked Oak Roughnecks have taken a timeout. We'll take one with them. You're watching Warrior Football on WashingtonWarriors.tv. In front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Hi, I'm Jake Coles, number 28 for the Washington Warriors. My mom, Sonia, with the Santa Fe Agency, is a graduate of Washington High School and a longtime Washington Warriors and Lady Warriors supporter. As an independent agency, Santa Fe has the ability to write policies with a variety of insurance companies, so finding the right fit for you, the customer, is easier. Please reach out to Sonia for your next insurance quote, whether it be on your house, auto, boat, RV, or commercial needs. Oklahoma Career Tech's been serving up skills to doers just like you for over 100 years. But this ain't your great Grammys and Pop Pop Tech School. Oklahoma's favorite place to learn new skills keeps learning new tricks. Welcome back to Reed Field. Warriors lead 13 to nothing. It's raining, guys. It's raining, good. Maybe Jesse's got that umbrella good. up there. Good. <laughs> yeah, me and Jesse are out in this. <laughs> Handoff goes to Cole Scott. Stiffs arms his way past the 40 yard line and midfield down to the 48 yard line. Nice run there by the senior running back, Cole Scott. Good. Good. Yeah, good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was once there, Stuart. I know. <laughs> remember the Chisholm game? Pretty cold. I remember the Chisholm game. <laughs> First down and 10 at the 49 yard line of Crooked Oak. And Jackson Hendricks able to get the rough necks to jump off sides. Give the Warriors a free five yards. Bring up first and five. 229 to go in the ball game. Or, excuse me, in the ball game. In the first quarter. Hudson Howard to the right of Hendricks. Hendricks looking to throw, throws left to Cage Morris. He's running up the middle now, looking to get some more yards on that play as he is brought down near the 20 yard line. Good pass and catch there by the quarterback and receiver. I think we're fixing to get called for over blocking. <laughs> Not sure that's a thing, but. Did they block here below the waist here on that? That Nate Roberts getting a little too physical? Yeah. Well, he's held onto his block, I guess, a little too long, and that'll be a penalty on the Warriors. Replay the down. Picked up about a yard on that. 
after the penalty. So it'll be first down and about four. Hendricks takes snap, looks right, throws it to Singletary, and he's unable to catch that pass. Bring hey, hang on, four. I got a spam call coming in. I need to take <laughs> real quick. One game that uh, note that we'll keep an eye on tonight is the Purcell and Frederick game. Frederick traveling. Frederick putting some miles on their buses, guys. Went to Washington earlier this year. Now they had to come back up here to Purcell this week. It's a normal day in Frederick. Yeah. Handoff goes to Hudson Howard. Speedy running back. Finds a hole and pushes it past the 30-yard line inside the 30 to the 28. 13 nothing Frederick over Purcell in the first quarter. You saw that Frederick team. They had some good-looking athletes. Just overmatched. That was 12 to 7 in our game against them, I believe, in the first half. But... Uh, Warriors defense clamped down on him. Only allowed that touchdown on a kickoff return as Hendricks looks at the post route. He's got a man. He floats it open to Cage Morris, and it is caught for a Warrior touchdown. 29-yard touchdown pass from Jackson Hendricks to Cage Morris on the post route. You know, guys, I talked to uh, just uh, Jackson's dad at work, and uh, talk about this, TJ, you and I went over to Tuttle and watched the scrimmage, and some of the passes that Jax threw, it <laughs> didn't look good, and, but, you know, he's, and I said, what do you think the difference is? He said, hey, he's coming in loose, he knows he's not going to be the quarterback all year long, you know, he's, he's in here to do a job, and he's playing relaxed, and uh, he's throwing some really good balls. Yeah, he's doing a, done a great job the last two weeks. Warriors take a 20 to nothing lead with that Mason Thomas extra point. You're watching Warrior football on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Everyone knows the best way to learn is to do it yourself. Sir, you okay? Because you shouldn't have to wait to do what you love. Whatever you choose to do, do you. Oklahoma Career Tech. Air Product Supply would like to wish Jackson Hendricks and the Washington Warriors the best of luck this football season. Air Product Supply is your local client master and Luxair distributor supplying quality HVAC equipment and parts to Oklahoma and Texas. Give us a call at 405-288-0233 and we will get you in contact with a local, licensed, and trusted contractor near you. This is Tyler Beller, the voice of Air Product Supply, signing off. Welcome back to Reed Field. Warriors lead 20 nothing as Mason Thomas pooch kicks it. Nice and high and it's a loose ball now. And the Warriors get recover, it's Jeffrey Osborne. The senior, Johnny on the spot, able to make that recovery on the loose ball. Nice recovery. Very excited for the young man right there. Jeffrey, a guy's been in the program for a long time and does nothing but work as hard as he can. Got himself an opportunity to make a play. Warriors will have the ball at the 39-yard line of Crooked Oak with a minute and 11 seconds to go in the first quarter, leading 20 to nothing. Major Cantrell in at quarterback. Hudson Howard to the right. Cantrell looking to throw. A little behind Cage Morris as he tries to hit him on the post route. Bring up second down and 10. Offensive line doing a really good job right now, picking up everything that Crooked Oaks coming at them. You know, the Crooked Oaks in the 4-3 tonight, uh, trying to bring a little pressure, and they're doing a really good job right now, trying to find everybody, keep their eyes up. We talked a little bit about that offensive line and their penalties last week, but the, the bad thing about being an offensive lineman is you only really get talked about it if, if something bad happens. But we know that the rushing prowess of the Warriors has 
Mason Thomas takes that jet, jet sweep. Can only be created by the work that's done by the hog mollies on the run of that line. Oh, yeah. I mean, this week, next week, the weeks after, Easton Berglund, Caleb Bruce, Tanner Winlock, Wyatt McCauley, Baylor Haynes, Jordan Vania, and plenty of other guys, they're going to do, do what they did just right there. I mean, everybody executed a plan. We had cut blocks. We had reach blocks, and they did a great job. There's another holding penalty. Oh, see where they placed the ball at. 35, it looks like, with 54 seconds to go in the quarter. Well, at least we're gaining yards on the penalties <laughs> this week. That's true. Second down and about six. And Trell looking to throw over the middle. Got Ben Vaughn. Snags the pass up high. And number six, Ariel Mendez. With the tackle. Nice pass and catch there. Good, solid throw there by Cantrell. Throwing a little, showing a little arm streak off. Arm's been a little... Rested over the last couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Still throwing a little bit, you know, in his downtime, but showing right there that he can still hit his receivers uh, on bend routes right there. You see Jackson go throw the football, and you think, you know, you, there's not a quarterback controversy, but, <laughs> hey, I, I, let's, let's show what I can do. And Charles looking to throw again, throwing to the right, this time to Mason Singletary. Well, hook route is the crooked oak defense trying to strip the ball loose and able to bring it, bring him down near the first down marker. Singletary doing a great job this year coming in at that receiver spot, replacing the load of seniors from last year at the skill position. Warriors lead 20 0 entering the second quarter. Listen to Washington Warriors.tv. Oh, Warriors. Construction is a proud Warrior partner. They are the leading directional drilling contractor with major operational hubs all over Oklahoma and in Texas. Their involvement in and support of our community goes far beyond utility construction. They're also a good neighbor and friend. When experience and safety count, your best source for directional drilling is B&H Construction. Go Warriors! school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. Yeah. Welcome back to Reed Field. TJ Scholes here with Trey Palico and Stuart McPherson. McPhers Trey, I'm going to be honest. Every time I say your name, I'm trying not to say Kai. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, you're in better company when you were that guy. <laughs> hey, hey, when you were gone, TJ, the first thing I say is, here at Reedfield, Stuart McPherson, and I say Scott. I'm thinking oh, yeah. <laughs> Belford. Scott, yeah. Scott passed away 11 years ago. Yeah. So it's it's habits. <laughs> First and goal for the Warriors at the six. Cantrell hands it off to Hudson Howard, but Crooked Oak defense there to string him down the backfield. Trying to get a number there. It's a big dude. We'll go with uh, number 35, Jerry Garcia. There you go. Good for famous for his music, The Grateful Dead. Second Good. down in law, or second and nine. I think a second goal for the Warriors. Uh, maybe look for Nate Roberts. So we're going to hand it off to Hudson Howard as he cuts it back up the middle, makes a man miss. And it's pretty close as they send Jax Hendricks in. A little inside zone right there, just trying to find an area to who's going to crease first and cut it up early. So it looked like that might have been an RPO with the, uh, you see, well, I mean, that's Nate Roberts just got messed up because he was looking for the pass there. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think Instead he... of blocking. Hendricks back in at quarterback. He's going to run it in and see how close he gets, and he's in. Touchdown Warriors on the quarterback keeper from Jackson Hendricks and kind of makes you realize why they brought Jackson on that play. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, getting Jacks back in there to make sure we run the ball, have dual option right there and run counter right there and then got option out the backside and cuts it up for the touchdown. Great read. In for the extra point attempt. Number 13 sophomore, Mason Thomas. Tatum Wilk takes the snap. Kick is up, and it is good. Hey, stay with us right here. I got Coach Lampkin coming. Coach Lampkin? Shouldn't he be oh, shouldn't be getting ready for tomorrow? <laughs> I think he's ready for tomorrow. <laughs> I told him. They said, they said, go get Coach Lampkin. We need some cheap fillers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Coach, uh, great win today. And uh, you got the girls set for a, another state championship game tomorrow. Let's talk about today's game first. You've got Lindsay, a team you've seen, uh, and uh, start off slow. But, again, your defense and Maggie Place were the difference early in the game. Oh, oh yeah, it was – she was uh, she was getting us a lot of ground ball outs and weak pop ups and usually we're pretty decent at those and and Lindsay was just keeping us off balance for a while you know that little freshman pitcher they have she's really good she's gonna cause a lot of problems in 3A for the next three years but we we were hitting the ball I felt like and it just finally took us a while to pop it open yeah uh, you had a lot of Adam balls yes a lot of balls that was hit right right at them and they made two or three really really good plays themselves that kept us off the board early so. Um, we was just trying to buy our time and stay in the ball game. Yeah, I was listening to the broadcast from uh, Lindsey, and they're talking about uh, Warriors have got to be a little nervous because you hadn't scored, but that's sort of been your M.O. this year. You, you haven't scored uh, – you don't score a lot of runs, but you get them in bunches when you need them, and Maggie Place keeps you in every game. Yeah, we, we, we're not scoring like we did last year. We're, we're a little bit different team from that side of things, but – we uh we stay on the bases and we we if we can get on the bases we usually cause havoc but yeah you know when you got Maggie and she's she's hardly letting anybody on base and the defense that's behind her we uh it's I don't ever really get too nervous but uh when we're not scoring and it's in the fifth it got a little nerve wracking for sure <laughs> but then when uh you get get to the seventh and it was uh you get you get runners on and then you get Tinley just goes yard yeah I mean that was. She hit the one before a foul and just crushed it, and then she hit that one, and then obviously two batters later, little sister gets to come up, and she hits a bomb herself. So that was uh, that was pretty pretty fun, pretty fun time for her for sure, and and little sister both doing it in the same inning in the in the state semifinals. Well, Taylor, let's talk about tomorrow. You uh, Tishomingo, Tishomingo, and uh, North Rock Creek go extra innings today. I'm sure you stuck around and watched that one. Yeah, they. Uh, they did. They got a. Uh, they got a really good arm. It's uh, the little sister to the arm that we they faced a couple years ago in the finals, um, and she's just a really good competitor. Uh, mixes everything up really well, and just she's. I, I've said all year long that I thought she was one of the top pitchers in the class. So it doesn't surprise me that they're here by any means. Yeah. Have you seen them uh, besides today? Have you seen them play this year? We've seen them play at the silo tournament and one other time, but we didn't actually play against them. Um, so we've, we've kept, kept eye on them a little bit just because I, I thought there was a pretty good chance that this might happen down the road. And North Rock Creek was in your district. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, they've been in our district the last two years and to be in the semifinals and then with us in the finals last year, it uh, just shows how tough our district really is. So tomorrow, uh, 1.30. It's going to be a different game as uh, weather-wise. Uh, playing in a, in probably 50 degree weather tomorrow. How's that going to affect Maggie? I, she's not really a uh, high intensity uh, type of pitcher, so it doesn't. She doesn't take a whole lot, or has to get really hot to get warmed up. I think that play, plays a benefit to her because she's more of a spinner. Where uh, the Anderson girl, she's she likes to throw it hard, and, and it takes her a little bit to get warmed up. So hopefully, I, I would think that that would play a little bit in our favor. Last question, you've got, again, going back to Maggie, hasn't given up a run in five games in the state tournament. Yeah, I mean, she's just, she's special, but what makes it even more special is the, is the things she does. She'll get us the ground balls and the, and the pop flies, and but just a lot of it just says to the defense that's behind her, too, because, I mean, we do, 
we do a lot of stuff and we work defense hard, hard, hard. And, and I think that's why we're able to make the plays and keep everybody off the uh, scoreboard as much as we do. Have you had an error? In, uh, when's the last time you had an error? I think we had a couple during regionals. So uh, it hadn't been too long ago, but we, we've kept them down for the most part. So hopefully we can keep them down for one more day. There you go. Taylor, good, good luck to you guys. And uh, it's, it's a, a great day to be a warrior tomorrow. Isn't it? Always is. Great day to be a warrior. Good luck, man. Thank you. Hey, I did my job, okay? <laughs> I filled up a series right there. Uh, Coach Lampkin uh, got a little haircut, it looks like, from the pep assembly. His shorts aren't as uh, short as they were last time <laughs> I saw him. That was hilarious with the uh, softball dads did at the uh, pep assembly on Thursday, dressing up as their daughters. and I think he pretty much accurately portrayed Daisy. I, Daisy came up with a big hit today. Oh, my goodness, man. Coming in in a pinch hit right there to get the, get them started with a leadoff double and then to eventually score the first run of the game, that, you know, uh, to just crack open like they were talking about the big innings. Uh, man, what a cool moment. Yeah, you uh, as a dad, you don't you, you, you want to go crazy. You're still the coach. Yes. But as a dad, you want to go crazy right there. Big run by Hudson Howard to start this series. The Warriors' defense held on the previous – Possession of the Roughnecks. Hudson Howard getting a lot of action tonight. The sophomore tailback and linebacker for the Warriors. Looks like we're going to replace him with Braden Arthur right now. Nice. And there's a penalty, I guess. Guys, in, in, this has hmm. got to be concerning to Coach Beller because, you know, as we've talked about, you can call a hold, you can call something just about every play. You hope the officials aren't trying to keep things, you know, close by calling some holding penalties there. But if they're holding, we got to clean that up. That's true. And We've got to clean it up. For one week for it to happen, you know, you can say, okay, but maybe two weeks in a row we got to – becomes a pattern then. Hendricks takes the snap. Run an option. With Cole Beller runs a guy over. Fumble. And loses the ball. This looks like – Crooked Oak might have recovered. We'll see what they call. And they do. That's the second fumble of the evening by the Warrior offense. Jackson ran in to, I, I couldn't see who it was, 13 maybe, 12, 13, somebody run it. One of our wide receivers blocking downfield, and, ja and Jackson runs into him, and he's the one. Our guy calls the penalty, calls the fumble. Yeah, number five, Kedrick Vick ripping it free and recovering. And the Roughnecks now, their first time in Washington territory with the ball at the 41-yard line. 8-12 to go. Warriors lead 27 to nothing here at Reed Field. Hill hands it off to Vick. Vic is stuffed. Lots of Warriors there, including Jackson Hendricks, number 52 for Washington. Easton Bergelin also on the tackle. Yeah, nights like tonight when you're having these teams run this option stuff, your backers are going to love it because they're going to get to scrape and, and fill inside and uh, make a lot of plays. So, uh, like I said, those defensive guys on the ends, Milner and Spalding are tackling the fake guy <laughs> numerous times. Ethan Clark now in on the line for the Warriors. In more motion. Looks Got like. some scores for you if you want them. Yeah, let's take them. Uh, Community Christian, 22, Comanche 7. That's in the first quarter. Uh, we got Colgate over Lexington, 8 nothing in the first. Rejoice Christian. Uh, number two team in the state, 27 Adair 8. That one's in the first quarter as well. Um, Purcell and uh, Frederick still 20 nothing. Frederick. That's in the second quarter. Trey, have you uh, seen any film on Rejoice this season? I know you were with the staff last year. That quarterback, pretty special. Yeah, I'm going to say that I haven't and tell you what I have seen is pretty good. Yeah. And that I haven't been looking ahead, but... Um, yes, I mean, the Wilson kid does, does a great job. He's a 
uh, can run for days and then is showing why he's going to have the opportunity to go play college football with his arm, too. I, I believe that Montana State is where he got, um, where he's committed to right now. Yes, that is correct. And, um, you know, they probably skill-wise, from what I've seen so far, they are doing a really good job. Linemen, probably not as big as they were last year, but still super effective uh, athletic bodies that are going to try to move people. Third down for the Roughnecks as Hill fakes the handoff. Now he's running backwards, just throws the ball up. And what a play made. <laughs> it's like backyard football broke out. <laughs> little tip drill is number 25 for the Roughnecks. The Money Hill, or Holt, looks like. Let me see. Yep, the Money Hill Holt is able to <laughs> catch that ball out of thin air. Going to be right around fourth down and about 11. Warriors looking to try to get an interception. Been very opportunistic so far this season with their defense. A couple guys interceptions. Jackson Hendricks with two, including an interception return for a touchdown. Marlon Moore, talented baseball player, also has a pair for the season. Another punt for the Roughnecks. Directionally punted towards the in zone and it rolls inside the looks like close to the five yard line. That's where the Warriors will take over. Yeah, I've been uh, doing a little bit of research on that. Rejoice Christian as well. Doesn't seem like they have much of a running game. He's your running game, your quarterback is, but some talented receivers. And uh, if you cover the receivers, then you got your quarterback there to run the ball with his 4 3, 4 4 speed. Yeah, it makes you want to kind of put up a guy that just spies the Wilson right. kid, yeah. you know, and like you said, cover, umbrella the receivers, make sure they can't get anything, and then if he takes off, you've got one guy that you know for sure is going to be taking care of him. <laughs> Here's a score that's uh, a little of interest because, uh, again, looking at the playoffs, you got uh, Bethel, it's 3-2 and two on the season, 15, Chandler, 12. Oh, wow. And that's in the second quarter. Uh, oh. Jones is only up. Uh, let me find their score again. Hendricks looking to throw it deep. Mason Singletary unable to corral that pass, but he had a step on the defender, Victor Oliveras. Jones 7, Luther 0 in the first. That was uh, That's on the Squirtle pay dirt. Uh, you guys are watching on the app. Um, Luther with a couple of impressive victories over the last couple of weeks, including a win over Crossings, who's the favorite to win that district. Jones going through a gauntlet of a non-district schedule, showing the dividends over the last couple of weeks as a handoff. Is that, I can't really tell who that one is. Is that that's, Arthur? Yep, I think that's Arthur. Yep. Nice to see him with a carry. It'll get 10 yards on the play and get a first down. Uh, last night we had uh, Lindsey and uh, Lilax, and that was a 14-0 Lindsey lead at halftime, and uh, and then they put it away in the second half, 44 nothing. Got a Washington alumnus there. Coaching, is that yep, correct, Stuart? Strode Lanham. Yeah, doing a good job there. 14 nothing, competing. Hendricks looking to throw over the middle. Got two guys there, and it's like some feet tangled up. Not sure who that pass was intended to, as Mason Singletary and Nate Roberts were both in the vicinity. Probably not. Somebody ran the wrong route there, because you shouldn't have two guys that close. Yeah, it looked like the inside receiver was supposed to kind of maybe bend that off a little bit more. But Singletary trying to be a ball hawk and just go get the ball as well. Second down and 10 at the 19-yard line with 5.08 to go in the half. Nice run by the running back, Braden Arthur. Picks up almost six, maybe seven. The third down and short for Washington. Warriors playing with a little tempo now. 
And that gets the uh, Roughnecks to jump off sides, and the yardage will be good for another Warrior first down. You know, on a night tonight, you know, you kind of wonder what's going through offense coordinator uh, Coach Autry's uh, head. You know, do I call plays just to score? Do I call plays to, you know, work on things that, you know, we are going to need to be successful later in the season? Um, you know, I think nights like tonight are as tough as nights, to, you know, that you're calling against, you know, a Jones or a Rejoice or a team like that. Hendricks looking to throw it deep. Hits Cage Morris. At the 50-yard line, he keeps his legs moving. And gets inside Crooked Oak territory. One thing, one thing I, first down. One thing, I, Trey, I think you don't want to do is you don't want to show something that you haven't done. Absolutely. You don't want to put anything on film to let, let somebody see you uh, see a play or a, a, a formation. Right. You know, uh, I mean, I think you, you know, I think you're definitely right, but I also think, you know, sometimes, you know, offensive coordinators, man, sometimes it's, uh, hey, let's put something on there so right. they have to work oh, that's on true, it. that's <laughs> that you yeah. might not ever use again. Yeah. yeah if you've you got know. something really crazy, yeah. you, they do that sometimes. They'll they'll put something out there just to make somebody take some time and practice <laughs> to, to work on it. You're right. Especially in a game like this where yeah. – now, yeah, I don't it doesn't matter I don't, if it really works. Yeah, I don't expect any swinging gate or ninja <laughs> coming out or spider, but, you know, uh, but definitely, you know, finding formations and things that are going to that are gonna work and that, you know, you you were able to do it live, you know, also helps. So. Well, we've, we've ran, we've seen, uh, we've ran some um, wild hog or whatever <laughs> they call it. Here. Yeah. Wild warrior. <laughs> 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 Take your quarterback out. You know, they've done that before, so. You might throw that back in just to uh, to have it there, you know, and again make somebody have to work on it. Right, absolutely. Been pretty impressed, you know, with the competition from non-district into district has occurred. The Washington defense has really stepped up, only allowing 15 points a game. And we know those first three weeks, offense the defense have been. Scrambling a little bit. They've really settled in on their own in district play as the pass goes to Mason Singletary. And he's trying to stretch it out to the outside. And still running. Make sure he takes care of the ball. I saw a flag late, maybe. Looks like it might be the area of face mask. We'll see if the officials threw one. Nope, that was just a bug, it looks like. But <laughs> <laughs> saw something, but he looked, appeared to be almost like there could be a face mask, but he just had him by the jersey and swung him around. But the Warriors are first down at the inside the 30s. The handoff goes to Braden Arthur, and he is slung down after about an eight yard gain. Second short for Washington. 3.14 to go in the half. Be interested to see what Coach Beller has to say at halftime. What, what their second half will look like. Right. Warriors averaging 36 points a game and knocking on the door on that 30-point mark as we speak as Thomas runs the jet sweep. Looking for room to run. And now we got a scrum as Jordan Vanye, the offensive lineman, Joins in on the party. Try to push the running back forward. Yeah, definitely something right there that the coaches have talked a lot about, getting those linemen in on, on some of them scrums. You see that a lot at the higher levels, and you wonder how uh, some kids don't try to do that all the time. Yeah, I mean, I think Kansas State did it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> kind of helped them, helped them a little bit. Right. Handoff goes to Brayden Arthur as he runs up the right side. And he's in for a touchdown. Good to see that young man get him a touchdown on his senior year after getting injured the very first play <laughs> due to a concussion, I believe, against Bayan, right? Yeah, uh, great to see him back healthy. Great. I mean, you know, just watching him at practice and watching him in the weight rooms just sit there. 
you know, just trying to see his teammates go out and do that and to have him come back and be able to be a part of it now, man, what what a great, great to see right there. Mason Thomas in for the extra point attempt. And it is no good with one. No, it's good. Oh, I saw the official call no good. Well, now, well, the, the referee said good, and okay. <laughs> the guy under the goal post said no good. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was looking at. Yeah. And uh, flashbacks of Oklahoma State, Iowa State back in 2011. But no good. 33 nothing. Warriors still lead with a minute 58 to go in the half. You're watching Warrior Football on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Hey, Warrior fans, this is Brian Arthur. My wife, Jennifer, and I are proud sponsors of the Washington Warriors and would like to wish all the Warriors and their coaches the best of luck this season. When you need a locally owned company that you can trust, look no further. For over 20 years, we have offered all of our customers the best products and services in the industry. Whether it's residential or commercial, we got you covered. Give us a call or visit our website. Entertain your children and grandchildren with videos that teach character and good values like obedience, kindness, gratitude, love of country, and self-worth. You know, just plain old common sense. Go to musicmunchkins.com to stream or order DVDs. And you'll be proud to see some of our own younger Washington... Going back to Reed Field, we lead 33-0 as Mason Thomas kicks it deep to Vic. Vic tries to get to the outside. Swarm of Warriors tackle him at the 20-yard line. Kilmer. Kilmer leading the attack. Again, Osborne there in the mix as well. Osborne already with a fumble recovery on kickoff special teams. Frederick 27, Purcell 0. Second quarter. Hi. Well, fellas, I think it's going to be a lot like this game over the next couple weeks. Well, you had Purcell Lindsay last week uh, at Lindsay, and it was a 12-6 ball game. And it was 12-6 early. Second quarter, I yes. believe. Lindsay won. Hill under center as he hands it off, and Nathan Spaulding swings the man down in the backfield. Again, Trey mentioned earlier, unblockable over the last three weeks here for the Warriors. You make a tackle, come have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, again, guys, let's, you, you want to get, you've got to have you guys get a little bit of action tonight. And, uh, but you sure don't want to get somebody hurt tonight in a, in a ball game that uh, you've got in hand right now, 33 to nothing with a minute to go. Uh, get some young guys in there, get them a lot of experience. But you got to, you're going, like you said, you're going to have uh, uh, um, Purcell and Lindsey will be a, a game that uh, uh, they're going to be ready. Both of those teams will be ready to play, and, and you'll have to go out and uh, get after them a little bit, but you go into a, uh, after that, and then it's Comanche and Little Axe, and, and then the first round of the playoffs, and you're going to be, uh, you're going to be struggling a little bit uh, to keep everybody focused, but again, it's one of those, let's, let's keep everybody healthy, and that's, the Warriors have, have had their struggles with health, but luckily, a lot of depth for right. the, this Warrior football team. That is right. Well, that's Look at great use, thing. using their last time out. Go ahead, Trey. Yeah, well, and that's the great thing, you know, um, you know, like you're saying, Stuart, you know, getting a lot of conditioning, a lot of get reps in. But, you know, uh, what's what's really great, what a lot of people don't take into account is that, man, you're getting a lot of kids in underneath the lights that may not see dividends this year, but definitely will next year. You know, so being able to get these kids in in games and, and then play live reps under the lights on Friday night is really big, too. So uh, good for the first first team guys trying to take care of business and get those guys that time uh, that they get to celebrate, too. One of those guys you mentioned is number 30, Blake Hellinger, freshman. Watching him in freshman ball, he's been a difference maker at that grade level, and 
he's in at linebacker right now. Well, and, and Coach Beller and I talk heavy about this uh, in his coaches' shows, getting ready for the playoffs. That uh, you're going, and this is something you'll be able to use uh, in these coming weeks uh, with your younger guys. And say, hey, you need to practice hard this week because you're probably going to, as you said, Trey, you're going to be under the lights Friday night. Yeah. Coming in for Easton Berglund is number 36, Wyatt Wilk. 19 seconds to go in the half. It is third down and 12 for the Roughnecks. And Phil takes the snap, hands it off, and it is stuffed on that left side for no gain. Say hi. hi. Say hi, Presley. Hi. <laughs> you got Presley on the mic? Presley, Presley brought me some money. Oh, oh well, there you go. She gave you money this time, time, huh? Instead of you giving her money. It is yes. halftime here, though. Warriors lead 33 to nothing. Watching Warrior football on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Okay, I'm going to go. Warriors in action. That's MusicMunchkins.com. Go Warriors! Warrior fans, there's a credit union designed for our community by our community members, Growing Oaks Federal Credit Union. We offer a wide array of banking services, a drive-up ATM, and money tools that will move you forward. Come and be a part of our member-owned, not-for-profit financial institution that knows you by name and has your best interest in mind. We're located behind Goldsby Store. We're here for you. Federally insured by NCUA. Go Warriors! Warrior fans, is your air conditioner making a sound like it's ready to take off? Is your heater not producing enough heat to take the chill out of the air? Then call Airfare Heat and Air. Dwayne Branham, Noah Zamora, owners of Airfare, are proud supporters of the Washington Warriors and are hometown guys with a hometown company that will give you great pricing on Luxair and Climate Master Geothermal HVAC systems. Need service on your existing equipment? Call them today at 405-626-1989 to schedule a service visit. That's Airfare. Welcome back to Reed Field as the Washington Warrior Band comes to the field. They will be competing tomorrow in state competition at Putnam City North High School. Sit back and enjoy their performance. Thank you. 
What a great performance there by the Washington Warrior Band, led by drum major Jenny Higdon. Jordan Ford, the uh, leader for that band, doing a great job, Trey. They, you mentioned that as you drop kids off to school. First thing you hear is them 
band members getting after you, right? Oh, yeah, man. Uh, one of the best parts of my day is every morning whenever I drop my kids off in the morning. Uh, my son's got football practice in the morning. And, you know, a lot of people think that this just happens uh, overnight. It does not. Uh, man, the, the work ethic that these kids put in, I mean, they're out there running. They're out there playing their instruments. They're in, in sections trying to uh, be as sound as they can. And so just the, so much good luck to them tomorrow. Uh, as they go and compete tomorrow, and uh, great job tonight. Exactly, exactly. They put in as much work as any other activity here at Washington, which makes them makes it why a lot of our activities are successful here. So, again, good luck to the Warriors tomorrow, the Warrior Band, and uh, congratulations. Hopefully, we got a, they got a couple of state competitions coming up. So, best of luck to them. Uh, also, you always know it's football season when you wake up in the morning and you can hear that band in the background. So. We're going to take a short break, and then we'll uh, take a look at the Little League team. They're being honored tonight, uh, the Washington Little League teams uh, playing on these fields on Saturday. So we'll come back here in a little bit as they, we see the uh, Little League teams. They're heating air. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0834. Always a good day for Salcedo, 
Number four, Ace Anderson. Number five, Logan Self. Number six, Mason Mays. Number seven, Russell Wills. Number eight, Dalton Birch. Number nine, Waylon Hastings. Number ten, Connor Still. Number eleven, Jay Rodarto. Number twelve, Sailor Sharif. Number thirteen, Dallas Lockwood. Number fifteen, Cannon Sides. Number twenty, Alex Miller. Number twenty-one, Maddox Denny. Number twenty-two, Jason Calhoun. Number twenty-four, Derek Merton. Number twenty-five, Harrison Click. Number thirty-two, Abel Zerby. Number forty-one, Mason Hastings. And number seventy-seven, Wyatt Sanders. Fourth and fifth grade team. And last but not least, the sixth grade Little League team. Number zero, Cooper Barefoot. Number one, Manuela Desmond. Number two, Aiden Huck Archery. Number three, Tucker Maddox. Number four, Layton Bone. Number five, Bo Beard. Number nine, Jet Holland. Number ten, Levi Zamora. Number eleven, Jose Rodarto. Number thirteen, Grayson Rector. Number fourteen, Cannon Clary. Number twenty, Boston Blundell. Number twenty-one, Dick Steele. Number twenty-three, Charlie Mann. Number twenty-five, Murdoch Doc Patterson. Number twenty-eight, Trip Brennan. Number thirty-two, Grayson Weber. Number thirty-three, Taylor Jacobs. Number thirty-five, Colt Grail. Number thirty-eight. Page Hayden, number 45, Evan Ford, and number 50, Maverick Zerby. They're six great teams. They will be playing tomorrow morning starting at 9 o'clock. Big hand for the Little League teams, y'all. They are glorious to be. Lots of props there for the Little League teams as they step out on the field and get recognized on a field they hope to play on sometime later on in their careers. They put in a lot of work and just enjoy themselves. And the parents, too, and the coaches, it's been a lot, taking a lot of time out of their of their days and helping them try to improve. And I think I, what I like a lot about this, uh, this Little League is if you go and watch a Seventh, sixth grade game, fifth grade game, you'll see a little bit of the same formations and stuff that the Warriors run on Friday nights, Trey. Man, you know, that's the one thing that I've always had a lot of respect for uh, for the Washington Little League. And, you know, and, and again, just like the high school football team, it didn't happen just yesterday. It's happened years and years and years in advance. And every year there's coaches that are helping Coach Little League that come up and talk to Coach Beller and like, Coach Beller, what are you guys doing? We want to try to be able to help you. You know, and Coach Beller says, listen, I'm not going to give you the whole playbook, but this is the basis of what we do. And to see that those guys are trying to get them so that whenever they come in as 6th and 7th graders or even just a 7th grader, they have an idea of the language that's being spoke. Right. And they're not having to learn it right then. And so, man, major props to um, all the, the parents out there that, uh, you know, uh, give their time to help uh, give those kids uh, a time to play and learn the game and, and hopefully enjoy and have fun uh, doing it so right. they'll, they'll love it later. Yeah, the, a program at the high school level can't be as successful as it is if there's not a good uh, junior high program, good little league program, and I think that's where it all starts and start developing those athletes and that work ethic. And like you said, I think the, the language, which you said, the common language is a big thing. Um, because now you're all speaking the same thing. So. Right, exactly. Looks like we got uh, Stuart McPherson down there with Coach Brad Beller. Go ahead, Stuart. Well, I, I was beginning to wonder if you were just going to ignore me. Uh, you know, <laughs> Coach Beller's got a lot of important things to do right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brad uh, scored at will in the, in the first half. What are we going to see here in the second half? You're going to see a lot of the younger guys that have worked all year uh, to get their chance at, you know, on Friday night and uh, – and that's going to be good because it was funny. Usually we're jumping on the younger kids at halftime to shut up. Now we were yelling at some of the older guys whenever we came in and said, hey, you're probably done. I want you to be focused and help these younger guys. And, and then 
you could see the big eyes of the younger guys, uh, you know, kind of flare up, and, and now all of a sudden they're asking a thousand questions they haven't asked all year, and, and so that's good. They need to experience this, and, and uh, we're going to still coach them like they, they were the first group, and they need to go out and execute. You know, we talked about that in the broadcast, Brad, that uh, probably makes practice going to go a little bit better because going out through the rest of this season, uh, these guys are going get, to get some more playing time. Yeah, and that's, that's what we told them, you know, early in the year, they're coming out just trying to survive because those older guys and the guys that are going to play on Friday night in the big games are trying to they're trying to sharpen up and they're just trying to hold on. And now it's like, OK, I've got an opportunity and I think tonight will be a, 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 a big stepping stone for them moving forward and, and being able to get out on on the field and execute at a high level. We, we're going to see the running clock. I have not been told that yet, <laughs> but uh, I, it, it wouldn't hurt me so we can stay healthy. I'll go talk to the referees. <laughs> Good luck to you, Brad. All right. Thank you, Coach Bella, for the halftime interview. And we're going to take a short break. Got about a minute left before we start the second half. You're watching Warrior Football on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Hi. I'm Jake Coles, number 28 for the Washington Warriors. My mom, Sonia, with the Santa Fe Agency, is a graduate of Washington High School and a longtime Washington Warriors and Lady Warriors supporter. As an independent agency, Santa Fe has the ability to write policies with a variety of insurance companies, so finding the right fit for you, the customer, is easier. Please reach out to Sonia for your next insurance quote, whether it be on your house, auto, boat, RV, or commercial needs. Oklahoma Career Tech's been serving up skills to doers just like you for over 100 years. But this ain't your great Grammys and Pop Pop Tech school. Oklahoma's favorite place to learn new skills keeps learning new tricks. Everyone knows the best way to learn is to do it yourself. Sir, you okay? Because you shouldn't have to wait to do what you love. Whatever you choose to do, do you. Oklahoma Career Tech. Air Product Supply would like to wish Jackson Hendricks and the Washington Warriors the best of luck this football season. Air Product Supply is your local Client Master and Lux Air Distributor supplying quality HVAC equipment and parts to Oklahoma and Texas. Give us a call at 405-288-0233 and we will get you in contact with a local, licensed, and trusted contractor near you. This is Tyler Beller, the voice of Air Product Supply, signing off. Go Warriors! Construction is a proud warrior partner. They are the leading directional drilling contractor with major operations. Welcome back to Reed Field as we get set for the second half kickoff. Looks like Mason Thomas again kicking off for the Warriors. No, nope, we got Tatum Wilk. His, not Tatum Wilk. Yeah, Tatum. Get Tatum and Wyatt. I got, I got all three of the Wilks in class. Four, so. <laughs> Tatum Wilk with the kickoff as it bounces at the 25-yard line. And Colin Bruner takes it for about four yards. Number 17, Kinsra Scott. Jeffrey Osborne. And Cohen Scarborough in on the tackle. As we get new players in, we'll... Announce him. Lucas Witcher in on special teams play as well. Starting on the defensive line for this second half is Caden Hutchinson, Ethan Clark, Lane Taylor, and Canyon Alporta. Handoff goes to Bruner. He gains a couple yards on the play. It's like number 36 for the Warriors, Wyatt Wilk, in on the tackle. Bring up second down and eight. Hey, uh, uh. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. No, hey, uh, got to some halftime stats. Okay. Is Bob keeping them for us in Florida? Yeah. <laughs> a lot to not enough. Okay. <laughs> Inside handoff goes to the money Holt. The money 
And gets about three on the play. We'll bring up third down and five. Community Christian 31, Comanche 7 at halftime. Comanche, Trey, we played Comanche in playoffs last year. Is that correct? That is correct. So they go from being a playoff team to may not even finish in fourth in this district. You know, that's the thing. It's probably going to be Washington. It's going to be number one, number uh, of course. We'll get it after this play. Hill hands it off to Vic, and Vic's able to stretch it to the 45-yard line before being pushed out of bounds by Marlon Moore. you got to wonder how uh, you're going to have, um, I think it's going to battle out between Frederick, Lindsey, Purcell for that, uh, and CCS. Yeah. So two, three, four. I mean, obviously the transitive property doesn't work in sports, but you got to think Frederick's got the... Uh, leg up right now in that second spot, which could be an advantage to whatever team has to travel all the way to southwest Oklahoma. Inside handoff to Holt, and he is met. Lane Taylor, number four, Cole Beller. Great, on that play. great fit by the linebackers right there, and for those guys to finish him off. So this misdirection for sure can confuse a, young, a normal defense, let alone a young defense. So we'll see how much uh, these young bucks have been paying attention in film study. So far making it difficult on this roughneck offense to start the second half as it is second down and eight. Handoff goes to Bruner. Jackson Hendricks and Cole Beller come up from their safety positions and make the tackle. It'll be third and about six. I think, Trey, you hit the nail on the head during halftime talking about, you know, this opportunity to play at a young age, meaningful minutes in a varsity game. I'm not going to see it this year in the playoffs, but it's just going to be motivation for them to keep getting better because they know that they're the one, next ones up coming up uh, in the program. Good. Turn it in. Great job. Finish. Nice tackle there by Cole Belly. Cole, again, we mentioned his name a lot this year. Very disciplined tackler for the Warriors. And he's able to keep the Roughnecks from picking up that first down. It'll be fourth down and about, we'll call it a short three. And it looks like Crooked Oak is going to punt. Looks like we got a little safe punt right here. So inside individual this week was probably really big for these kids making sure that they were listening and paying attention to all their read keys and if they were which way they were going man great punt yeah that ball bounced inside the 15 yard line or near the 10 and again this punter victor Ontiveros, able to directionally punt the ball towards the sideline have a long field ahead of him. Warriors will start first down and 10 at the nine. Jackson Hendricks in at quarterback. Jordan Kilmer Sees his first action at the wide receiver position as Hendricks pitches it out to the receiver, Mason Singletary, and he is pushed out of bounds. Nice pickup on first down of about 21 yards. Gives the Warriors a first down at the 30. Six twenty-four to go in the third quarter. Fire! 
Tatum Wilk also in at receiver. As Hendricks takes the snap, hands it off to Hudson Howard. Got some good blocking. Now, which is past the 45-yard line. Take a Purcell Vision Source replay of that look. Again, good blocking there by the line to set the edge. We got an injured Crooked Oak defender on the field. Both staffs take a look at him. He's able to walk or stand up on his own. That's number 40, Brian Perez. That might be a lower leg injury. That pickup by Howard gives the Warriors a first down at the 46-yard line. The officials pretty patient to get this clock rolling. Be getting paid by the hour. Cool here. <laughs> <laughs> First down for the Warriors at the 46. Two receivers to the right of Hendricks. He sends Wilk in motion. Hand off to Howard as he tries to make a man miss in the backfield, but he is stuffed by number three, Pablo Rodriguez. A two-yard pickup, make up, make it third and eight, or second and eight, excuse me. Well, Pablo Rodriguez has been around the yard tonight. Yeah. Uh, big kid, uh, playing hard at defensive end over there for the Roughnecks. Handoff goes to Howard again. Good blocking in the middle of the line is he's able to gain some good yards on that enough for a warrior first down great movement right there great movement by the front line uh, starting to see some of these guys come off some of the uh, young guys starting to come in on the offensive line now as well it's like Brucey still in at center and McCauley Bonnier on that left side. They brought in Canyon Acosta. Let me get that last name right. Canyon Alcorta and Ethan Clark to man that right side of the line. They fire off and try to provide a hole for Hudson Howard, but he is wrapped up by the big defensive lineman by the Crooked Oak Roughnecks. That looks like number 58, William Esparza. Big old kid there. Yes. Uh, watched a little bit of film this week and saw him make a few plays this week, uh, plugging up the inside there. Second and seven for the Warrior offense with 3.45 to go in the third quarter. Late substitution by the Warriors. Number 18, Braden Hutchinson, comes in for Mason Singletary. And Howard gets the ball to the right. Nice tackle by number 30, Miguel Villegas. Otherwise, I think Howard scores on that play. Oh, yeah. A lot of daylight right there uh, coming off the edge. Also looks like number 59, Kingston Stringer in now at uh, center. All right. that's one of the advantages of having depth. If you look at when the Warriors come out in pregame and they go in their specific uh, position groups, that lineman group, <laughs> there's quite a bit of guys in that. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of times that's, a, that's an area where, you know, sometimes people struggle, one, because some of those uh, skinny lineman guys want to say they're tight ends <laughs> and uh, want to try to move around the yard, uh, but you know, 
uh, honestly, just talking with Coach Beller and some of the coaches on the staff, Coach Fairborn, Coach McKay, you know, that was something that uh, that freshman, sophomore group, uh, a couple of them guys, man, a lot of, there's a lot of true linemen right. in there that, uh, I mean, and if you look, man, man they're good-looking kids, too. Yeah. I mean, they're not, you know, your typical freshman, sophomore kids coming in. I mean, they're, they're six foot, they're six one, six two, you know, got a little meat on them. And yeah. so, um, got some thick hips. Yes, yeah. yes. And so ready to get after it. And so, like I said earlier, and we talked about, man, these these uh, snaps right here, you know, you just can't get back as a as a young kid playing against uh, varsity varsity people. Speaking of, hey guys, White McCauley and Ethan Clark teamed up on a pancake there. Go ahead, Stuart. Uh, just talk with Leslie, the trainer. We got some lightning in the area. No, you didn't. 422 miles away. Okay. <laughs> I was say I think to bring out my app. The stream just <laughs> got interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> Internet is bad now. Yeah. Looks like quarterback change number sixteen, Kale Breakfield. Got a little bit of action last week. Freshman with a strong arm. Out to lead the Warrior offense with a minute to go in the third quarter as he hands it off to Braden Arthur. Warriors with a slew of running backs as so they try to work Arthur back into some shape. I, I would want to be the backup quarterback on this group. Because <laughs> like you said, with the running backs that we have, just turn around and hand the ball off. Get out of the way. 17, Kinder Scott coming in for Mason Thomas. Looks like he's got a, some people, some cheerleaders on his fan page. They cheer for him as the clock winds down in this quarter. Wyatt Wilk behind Breakfield gets the handoff. Looking for a room to run, and he gets slung down by number four, Davion Hill. Quarterback and defensive back for the Roughnecks. Talented basketball player as well. well at the end of the third quarter, Warriors lead 33 to nothing. Watching Warrior football on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Oops, hold on a second. Hubs all over Oklahoma and in Texas. Their involvement in and support of our community goes far beyond utility construction. They're also a good neighbor and friend. When experience and safety count, your best source for directional drilling is B&H Construction. Go Warriors! high school streaming service scordle.tv find out more at scordle.com slash stream hey warrior fans this is brian arthur my wife jennifer and i are proud sponsors of the washington warriors and would like to wish all the warriors and their coaches the best of luck this season when you need a locally owned company that you can trust look no further for over 20 years we have offered all of our customers the best products and services in the industry whether it's residential or commercial, we got you covered. Give us a call or visit our website. Entertain your children and grandchildren with videos that teach character and good values like obedience, kindness, gratitude, love of country, and self-worth. You know, just plain old common sense. Go to musicmunchkins.com to stream or order DVDs. And you'll be proud to see some of our own younger Washington warriors. Well, welcome back to Reed Field. Start of the fourth quarter, and the Warriors lead 33 to nothing as Kinzer Scott takes the jet sweep. Now brings it back from the direction he ran into. He's able to get nice yardage on that play. How about some scores, guys? Yeah, give us some updates here. All right, I got uh, Community Christian 31, Comanche 7. That's in the uh, third quarter. No, that's a halftime score, excuse me. Uh, Colgate 21, Lexington 0. That's a halftime score. Rejoice Christian 50, Adair 8 in the third quarter. And Adair's dropped off the last couple of years. Frederick 
34, Purcell 0. That's in the third. Handoff goes to freshman. Number 30, Blake Helliger. Helliger? How do you say that? Heiliger? Heiliger. 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 All right. Nice hard running by him. Gives the Warriors a first and goal at the two-yard line. We'll see what the coaching staff draws up here. Might try to get Blake a touchdown. Yeah, Coach Autry's probably thinking keep it simple. Yeah. Just don't have a lot of moving parts. Hand off. Try to get in there. Or just keep it in Brakefield's hands and take it to the house. High snap goes to Kinzer Scott. He dives for the touchdown, and he is in. Oh, let's go. Kinzer Scott, younger brother of Cole Scott, able to punch it in for a two-yard touchdown run to extend the lead to 39 nothing, Washington. Nice dive and extension of the ball. Get in the end zone. Well, Big Brother's going to hear about that one tonight. <laughs> yeah. No, he was coaching a little bit. He was trying to get him in the right spot. He knew the play was coming to him. So. <laughs> Two-point conversion attempt. Lucas Witcher lines up behind Brakefield. And the handoff goes to Witcher. He tries to get in, but he is unsuccessful. With 10-16 to go in the game, Warriors lead 39 to nothing. You're watching Warrior football on WashingtonWarriors.tv. In action, that's MusicMunchkins.com. Go Warriors! Warrior fans, there's a credit union designed for our community by our community members, Growing Oaks Federal Credit Union. We offer a wide array of banking services, a drive-up ATM, and money tools that will move you forward. Come and be a part of our member-owned, not-for-profit financial institution that knows you by name and has your best interest in mind. We're Welcome back to Reed Field. TJ Scholes here with Trey Palico and Stuart McPherson. Tatum Wilk. Kickoff bounces off onto Veros and picked up by Bruner. But Heiliger is there to tackle him at the 13 yard line. Next week, fall break. Fall break. That's one of the two words the teachers love to hear around this time of year. I thought it was payday. Well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's payday's another two weeks after that, or a week after that. So, but fall break means Thursday night football, and the Warriors will travel to Lindsay to face the Leopards. Coach Beller was just talking. We were talking here uh, during the timeout and talking about scores and what, uh, who he thought was the second best team, and he said Lindsay. And I said, why Lindsay? He said. We haven't played them yet. Oh, there you go. <laughs> 9.42 to go in the ball game. New quarterback in for Crooked Oak as the ball is loose. We'll have to see if the Warriors were able to recover. They're pointing. And they do. Let's see who's able to jump on that. We take the Purcell Vision Source instant replay. I think it was 30. There's a bunch of them in there, but yeah, it looks like it might have been. Heiliger is. Here's a here's a little officiating tip, guys. You have a fumble. If the officials kill the clock, 
the other team's got the football. There you go. Because if the, if the fumbling team recovers their own fumble, they're going to keep that clock rolling. Right. Oh, um, nice tip for the booth right there. <laughs> Warriors trying to get their offense back on the field. Number 58, Sam Cantrell runs out to get on the offensive line. Eighteen Hutchinson line up in the slot, and Crooked Oak's a little late to get on the field too. As the handoff goes to Witcher, Witcher makes a couple guys miss in the backfield before gaining a couple yards on that play. That Crooked Oak defender just barely makes it past the line of scrimmage. One of the players I've been impressed with for Crooked Oak on that last drive specifically was number thirty, Miguel Villegas. He was doing a good job with his run fits at that linebacker position. And good tackling. You had Hudson Howard, not an easy guy to tackle, and Braden, Braden uh, Arthur. Yeah, and absolutely. He's not like, let's see, we got some stats on him. He's just a junior, but he does not look like he's um, the size of our guys, but he was uh, doing a great job of wrapping up as the handoff goes to Witcher on the stretch play and almost breaks free. Oh. Well, guys, what you've got to appreciate Crooked Oak because – they know we've, we've pulled off, and they've pulled off. We didn't see that last week with CCS. Right. And CCS trying yeah. to pass yeah. against our threes. Yeah, yeah. Their ones. kept their ones in yeah. defensively and offensively. I, I do – you can tell this team, and Coach Beller mentioned the coach show, they are – Crooked Oak team is uh, much more improved than they were last year. You don't see, you know, the undisciplined play where – I just I feel like their offensive line plays a lot better. Uh, last year it just seemed like they were just throwing the ball up and there's turnovers left and right. I feel like they've done a good job blocking tonight, and kind of trying to establish an identity, a new identity here at Crooked Oak as Brakefield's able to fall on that high snap. Hits him in the hands. Probably should recover, should get that one, but came in a little hot, being up fourth down for the Warriors. You know, Crooked Oak, back when we were all in Class A. Uh, we had some some barn burners with Cricket Oak. Uh, they had some athletes, Ooh. and they could they could go. Oh man, the Spotwoods of the world, and the Spot, yes, sir. Man, those kids could go. You know, uh, um, I'm a warrior now, but used to be a Velma Comet, and so we were in Class A with Washington and and Crooked Oak, and we met them plenty of times in the quarters and the semis. And man, they could get it. Fourth and long at the 14-yard line as Brakefield rolls to the left, looking to throw, and it is knocked away by number 11, Victor Ontiveros, intended for Jordan Kilmer, and it'll be a turnover on downs. Well, I heard there's a football game going on tomorrow just south of here. Fellas, what do you think? OU Texas kind of have a little bit of luster well here's one what, off of it from last week here's here's a clue to the to the luster that's that's lost my daughter and son-in-law Kelsey and Tommy Warndine they have season tickets and they didn't draw out for the OU Texas game then they did last year didn't this year Tuesday they got a phone call from OU hey would you like four tickets to the OU Texas game Handoff goes to the right side. Nice tackle there by Ethan Clark. And number 51, Garrett Riley gets in the mix for the first time tonight. So are they taking those tickets, Stuart? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. And my son-in-law, Tommy, is uh, he is a fanatic, OU fanatic. I, I told, told you, TJ, before the game, I said, if they get beat by Kansas, he might jump out of the stadium. <laughs> Oh, man. I think OU will, will play hard uh, without without a quarterback and Evers coming back for Texas. I think it's going to be it's going to be tough for OU. I, I, I say Texas is going to win. I, I'm not going to predict the score, I don't, but I think Texas will win. On Tavares takes the snap, pitches it to the left side, and speedy little guy, Diego Saavedra, Tries to get outside, but it's tackled by number 64, Benny Johnson. Good job by the linebacker for the Warriors. 
tackle? Yeah, we talked about earlier, you know, what, seven or eight of the last games have been one-score games. So hoping that it's at least competitive. And I know the uh, Sooner Nation. Let's talk about the, the, uh, the Cowboys and the Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> Oklahoma State has Texas Tech coming to town. I don't want to cut you off, Trey. You can, you can, y'all never said. I at least I said. Oh, you said. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think Texas is going to beat them. But I think it's going to be a close game. I think well, it's going to be a close game. Somebody's got to go opposite here, so <laughs> I, I'm going to stick with the Sooners. Um, you know, one of them games. Uh, seen it many times before. You know, we thought we were going to route Texas, and Texas thinks they're going to come in and route OU. You know, and so I'm uh, I'm, I'm going with the Sooners. Uh, I think uh, last week was probably a shock, or two weeks ago was probably a shock, and this week was I will get it back together, and and or two weeks ago, and then after this week, I think coaches said, ah, we're going to have to change a little something right <laughs> up right here. So I think they probably got after them pretty good this week, and um, and then, you know, there's just nothing you can do to create the atmosphere of OU Texas. I don't care how good or how bad anybody is. Uh, so, I'm going to go with the Sooners. Well, Tavares has to punt after that tackle by Lucas Witcher and the Warriors will take over at the Crooked Oak 40-yard line. Yeah, I think uh, oh, she has got to be, got to watch out for that uh, little hangover after that Baylor victory. And I mean, that was a physical football game. And you never know, Texas Tech beat Texas earlier on this season. So, they're playing some pretty good football. Got a running quarterback. Um, but it is in Stillwater. And so, you just never know. i I got to think the Cowboys win that tomorrow. I think they're nine-and-a-half-point favorites. Cowboys win with two touchdowns. Yeah. Well, I'm going to jump on that train with the Cowboys. Uh, I think the Cowboys take care of business tomorrow. They're the best team in the Big 12. Yeah, they're looking like it. K-State might have something to say about that. Um, Kansas might have something to say yeah, about maybe. that. maybe. Kansas really hadn't played anybody yet. We'll find out tomorrow <laughs> if TCU comes to town. Game day. Tell, tell game day that. Game day in Lawrence. <laughs> tomorrow. So that'll be fun to wake up and hear a little rock chalk Jayhawk. Yeah. Maybe Kate Hendricks is watching the stream. Him, big KU fan. Bet he wishes he was there now that KU football is actually good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Handoff goes to uh, great friend of, Great friend of mine uh, uh, was the pitching coach at, at Kansas and you know, even her greatest memories are basketball there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and everybody obviously knows how great Kansas basketball is. So for everybody on campus to be going watching football, Kansas is Kansas has got to be up there right now. Cloud nine. Minute 45 left in the ball game. Second down and eight. The handoff goes to Wilt. Oh, nice little counter play. we got play. some room to run. Nice run by Wyatt Wilt. As he gets the ball inside the 30-yard line down to around the 25. Good blocking there by the young line. I'm going to make a prediction for you guys. Warriors will win another state championship tomorrow. Yeah, I like that prediction. That would be a good one. They had a little revenge. Try to get after Miss Anderson's little sister, Grace Anderson. Gave the Warriors some trouble. A couple years ago, two years in a row, in fact. And so, see if she can, the Warriors, Lady Warriors can get after younger sister tomorrow. Yeah, I am, uh, I'm definitely jumping on that one. I, I got, I got Warriors winning that ball game uh, tomorrow by five runs. Five runs. Maggie Place has yet to give up a run in two, two state tournaments in five games. She's been phenomenal for the Warriors as the, Clock ticks under 30 seconds here at Reed Field, and both teams approach midfield. Fellas, I think the goal was accomplished tonight. Does not appear anybody got injured, as far as we know. Uh, Warriors took care of business. Come away with a 39 nothing victory over Crooked Oak. Stuart, thoughts? Hey, nobody got hurt. <laughs> Probably the first time we can say that in six games. Nobody got hurt tonight. So that's that's a big plus. And uh, get to go to Lindsay next week. 
Lindsey's going to be ready to play. I, you know, that's the thing. Uh, Purcell the next week, they're going to be ready to play. So the Warriors will have a, a short week of practice, but uh, be able to get to work on some things. And we'll see how many more of these guys come back. Uh, we saw Milner tonight a little bit. We saw uh, Major Cantrell a little bit tonight. We'll see how much more we see of them next week. Trey, thoughts from you? Yeah, uh, you know, good night. Uh, definitely would have loved to clean up some of them uh, penalties early, but I thought they did a great job uh, down the line of trying to execute, uh, do things right, and then going into next week, I mean, listen, two programs that know each other so, so well. Um, you know, exciting. Uh, did a lot of seven-on-seven seven this summer uh, with Lindsey from our junior high programs all the way to the high school programs. And so those kids, uh, big mutual respect from both coaching staff. And uh, listen, you said it earlier, everybody's got it marked on the schedule. Right. And uh, uh, Lindsey knows that they wanted to be in the top two, top three of the district this year. And so I promise you they're ready to play this game next week. Well, I think Kyle will be gone another week, so we'll have you back in the booth again next week. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. All Let's right. go. Certainly enjoyed your insight. And of course, being on the staff, the – last uh, multiple years, I, I guess, uh, give some good information on what the Warriors are trying to do. Again, Warriors win on their home field 39 to nothing over Crooked Oak. You've been watching Warrior Football on WashingtonWarriors.tv. Hey, Warrior fans. There's a credit union designed for our community by our community members, Growing Oaks Federal Credit Union. We offer a wide array of banking services, a drive-up ATM, and money tools that will move you forward. Come and be a part of our member-owned, not-for-profit financial institution that knows you by name and has your best interest in mind. We're located behind Goldsby Store. We're here for you. Federally insured by NCUA. Go Warriors! Warrior fans, is your air conditioner making a sound like it's ready to take off? Is your heater not producing enough heat to take the chill out of the air? Then call Airfare Heat and Air. Dwayne Branham, Noah Zamora, owners of Airfare, are proud supporters of the Washington Warriors and are hometown guys with a hometown company that will give you great pricing on Luxair and Climate Master Geothermal HVAC systems. Need service on your existing equipment? Call them today at 405-626-1989 to schedule a service visit. That's Airfare Heat and Air. 